All right, what's up, everyone? I'm Faloki, and apparently the Seattle Seahawks are done with Jadavion Clowney, and today I want to give my thoughts on it. Before that, though, I just wanted to ask a quick question. Would you guys like to see NBA content? Because obviously the NBA restart has happened and there's a lot of interesting things happening right now. But, you know, obviously this channel is a Seahawks football channel. You know, I, I just wanted to ask because, you know, I'm a big fan of basketball. I, I think I'm pretty knowledgeable about the NBA and how basketball is actually played more than the NFL and football. So I uh, just wanted to ask and, you know, maybe if people actually would like to watch some NBA content, I could make some as well. But now to get into the video, reports from Michael Silver have basically said that the Seattle Seahawks have given up on Jadavion Clowney because he's asking for too much. Now, Jadavion Clowney was given a, I think, one year deal for 15 or 16 million from the Seattle Seahawks earlier in free agency as kind of the final offer. But apparently he still wants more than that or he's just uninterested in the 15 million that they offered. And, you know, now that the Seahawks, I believe, only have $10 million in cap space, they can't afford that. And it seems like they're moving on to someone cheaper like Everson Griffin or Clay Matthews even. Now, as you've been seeing the tweet on your screen, you've probably noticed something pretty interesting at the end. It says a deal could happen soon. Now, obviously, this is talking about Clay Matthews or Everson Griffin, two veteran pass rush help options. And this is really good to hear because it's basically guaranteeing that the Seahawks are going to do something to help their pass rush. There's a lot of very good veteran like options that they have or, you know, cheaper one year, two year, maybe options that they can go with to help their pass rush. And it, it's good to see that a deal could happen soon is basically telling us that the Seahawks are going to do something at least to try to help their pass rush with some sort of veteran. Also in the thread of the original tweet, Michael Silver says that Jadavion Clowney is still trying to look for a deal that fits what he believes his value is, but no team right now is willing to give him that. And honestly, I think that just means that Jadavion Clowney is going to probably have to panic and sign a much cheaper deal than he wants to closer to when the season starts. And, you know, obviously, since of the whole uh, coronavirus thing, um, Jadavion Clowney, he's been injured quite a bit in his career. He played through a hernia last year. And I, I mean, he's he's going to have to get a physical done by teams. And apparently there's been something said from Michael Silver as well, I believe, that teams have to do a kind of five day testing period for the coronavirus for any any player they fly in to try to do a physical for before they can enter the building. So basically they'd have to contact a player fly him over wait five days and then do a physical so you know any team that would be interested in Jadavion Clowney would have to wait basically at least a week before they could sign him if they actually wanted to get a physical done so Jadavion Clowney his options are looking limited so I wouldn't be surprised if he signs a much cheaper deal than he is wanting just for a one-year deal to get past this season you know with all the weird stuff going on but it's looking kind of bad for Jadavion Clowney right now but I'm glad that the Seahawks have moved on and I, I really hope that Everson Griffin is a choice but you know Clay Matthews is also a very good player so to compare Everson Griffin and Clay Matthews real quick, we're going to look at the stats from last year. In 2019, in 15 games, Everson Griffin had 8 sacks, 24 quarterback hits, and 11 tackles for loss, while Clay Matthews in 13 games had 8 sacks, 11 quarterback hits, and 9 tackles for loss. So obviously, two less games for Clay Matthews, much less quarterback hits with the same amount of sacks. So honestly, it's looking like both of these players would be pretty even options, pretty good options either way. They would definitely play different roles in the scheme of Seattle, and we're going to get into that right now. Now, I'm not super knowledgeable about schemes, especially not defensive schemes when it comes to football, but I have been reading a bit, and I'm going to be quoting a part of the Seattle Times article that was recently posted uh, right now, and this is basically what it says. Everson Griffin projects more to play the five technique and spot in Seattle scheme where Rasheem Green, LJ Collier, and Jackson play, while Matthews would project more as a Leo or rush end where the Seahawks would also use Bruce Irvin, Benson Maioa, and rookies Darrell Taylor and Alton Robinson. Now I'm going to be completely honest with you. I have no idea what a five technique end spot is or a Leo rush end or whatever. So I'm not going to be going off of what they do in the scheme. I'm going to be going off of the players that they would possibly replace. Now, Everson Griffin, it said that he would possibly replace Rasheem Green, LJ Collier, or Brandon Jackson. And Clay Matthews would possibly replace Bruce Irvin, Benson Maioa, Darrell Taylor, or Alton Robinson. Now, when I'm looking at the players that each possible option would be replacing, it seems to me like the spot that Clay Matthews would fill in for is actually pretty good right now. Bruce Irvin, Benson Maioa, two pretty good options that are probably going to do pretty well this season. Darrell Taylor and Alton Robinson. I'd like to see Darrell Taylor and Alton Robinson both get some opportunities if they can. 
And when it comes to Everson Griffin, he's going to be filling in for Rasheem Green, who, I mean, was the leading sack producer of our team last season. But, you know, there's always a chance to get an upgrade over four sacks. You know, LJ Collier, somewhat of a bust. I'd like to see him have a chip on his shoulder and do better. And then Brandon Jackson, who they just uh, dropped and then re-signed for a cheaper contract, I believe. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm pretty sure that's who that is. So it seems like the spot where Everson Griffin would fill in for seems to be much more of a need because I, I have a lot of confidence in Bruce Irvin and Benson Maioa. They both seem like very good options. Obviously, we know who Bruce Irvin is, but Benson Maioa seems like a very good option that can come in and probably get us six, seven, eight sacks pretty easily. Um, Darrell Taylor, Alton Robinson, I'd like to see them get opportunities. So, you know, Clay Matthews coming in and taking another one of the roster spots at that position in the depth chart would just be, you know, I, I think it's a bit unnecessary for the Clay Matthews pickup. I think Everson Griffin, it makes more sense because LJ Collier, Brandon Jackson, Rasheem Green, definitely much, you know, less good than Bruce Irvin, Ben Samayo, Darrell Taylor, Alton Robinson. So honestly, just looking at the players they'd replace because I'm not too much of a schemes guy, it seems like Everson Griffin would be making more of an impact in the players that he could potentially replace. Now, when the Seattle Seahawks traded for Jadavion Clowney, they gave Houston two linebackers and a third round pick. And a lot of people probably thought that if the Seahawks didn't actually re-sign Jadavion Clowney, they'd get a pick for compensation. But they aren't now because he didn't sign early enough. And, you know, now that the deadline's passed, we're going to get nothing for him signing with another team. But honestly, you know, he, whatever. I mean, it's a third round pick. I think it turned into some guy from UCLA for the Patriots. It, it was a third round pick. You know, it, it wasn't anything insane. It was a late third round pick. So not too great of a value. Obviously, sucks losing the pick, sucks losing the players for a guy who played, I think, what, 10 games for us, maybe less, maybe more. But, you know, he's only he was a one season rental for a third round pick and two linebackers that we probably weren't going to use anyway. So, I mean, kind of sucks to lose a third round pick and not get anything back in compensation. But what are you going to do now to wrap up the video? What should the Seattle Seahawks do? Obviously, both Everson Griffin and Clay Matthews are going to be one year options. They're both veterans. I think Everson Griffin is 32 and Clay Matthews is 34. So they're both definitely around the end of their careers. They're going to be getting a one year deal, probably pretty cheap as well so i think me personally from looking at the players they'd replace i think everson griffin should be the pickup i've said that he should be the pickup um you know clay matthews he he played less games got the same amount of sacks you know the stats looked all right but you know everson griffin he had 13 more quarterback hits and i mean that does mean that does mean something that means that he's getting to the quarterback a little bit more than clay matthews is obviously they play different they play different roles in whatever defense they're going to be playing for and you know i'm not too knowledgeable about the difference in the roles that they play i never played football <laughs> i played basketball my whole life so i i'm just a big fan of watching football but you know it, it seems like from the players that they'd replace everson griffin would be replacing rasheem green lj collier and brandon jackson it just seems like everson griffin's going to be filling a much bigger hole and clay matthews he would supposedly take the spot of bruce irvin benson Mayoa, alton robinson and darrell taylor so it just seems like you know bruce irvin he's probably going to be the starter benson Mayoa looks like a very good option he's probably going to get quite a bit of uh, opportunities darrell taylor alton robinson two rookies that we probably want to try to get in the game to try to grow so it just seems like Everson Griffin makes more sense because, you know, Rasheem Green, LJ Collier, you know, they're they're not the greatest of players. Obviously, Rasheem Green led our team in sacks last year, but we don't know what he's going to be. Four sacks isn't anything amazing, but, you know, I, I think Everson Griffin is definitely the option. I assume he'll probably sign a one year, maybe five, six million dollar deal. That's probably not too crazy with the guarantees. And then maybe we can sign Josh Gordon for relatively cheap whenever he gets his decision for his reinstatement. So honestly, I think Everson Griffin fills a bigger hole. Yeah, I mean, I could be completely wrong. I'm just going from what I've read of like the people that he would possibly fill in for. And I think either option would be fine. You know, it'd be a one year rental for not too expensive. And we would probably be able to get Josh Gordon on the side as well. So either way, I think there's not really a bad option here. I think Everson Griffin looks like a better option in my opinion. But Clay Matthews, I'd be willing to have him too. I, I'm just glad that Seattle Seahawks are basically guaranteed to go after someone to help their pass rush. And I think that either way, it's going to be a cheap deal. And Josh Gordon could possibly be signed as well.
But with that, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of this. Everson Griffin, Clay Matthews, who would you rather sign? Do you care about Jadavion Clowney being given up on? I think it's a good thing, Jadavion Clowney. I mean, he can definitely be a great player. But, you know, $15 million or more for someone who seems pretty inconsistent when you watch him play, you know, I just was not a big fan. So I'm glad we're probably going to go after a cheaper one-year veteran option. And, I mean, the money that we were going to give to Jadavion Clowney is probably going to be going to Jamal Adams now for the next long, long, long time, I hope. So, you know, honestly, I think it's a good thing that we've given up on Jadavion Clowney. Will Jadavion Clowney get a deal from another team? I have no idea. We'll just have to wait and see. But, uh, you know, once again, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. And leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new. Subscribe to my second channel. We're almost at 100 subscribers. And follow me on Twitch. I'll probably start streaming sometime next week. So stay on the lookout for that. I'll obviously announce it on this channel. So, yeah, with that, I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a great day.